Oh, hey, hey, how's it going? I totally forgot you guys were coming here today. Um, yeah, I'm kind of unprepared at the moment, so uh, can you just give me a second? Okay, I'm ready to do the intro. Uh, as you know, this is the intro of the video, and uh, this is the part of the video where I talk about what we're going to be talking about in the video. Uh, but I probably don't even need to talk about it really all that much because you guys read the title of the video, so you know what it's about. You know that it's about the NTH1 thermal paste from Noctua. Uh, I did a video a while back where I tried to overclock my i7-4790K. Well, I didn't try. I did it. And uh, I was getting some really high temperatures. And I had a few people mention in the comments that uh, perhaps my CPU cooler was mounted improperly or something like that. At the time, I didn't really feel like that was necessarily the case, but it's been one of those things that's just kind of been nagging at the back of my mind for a long time now. So I've decided to just go ahead and give it a try. I'm going to pull my CPU cooler, put some new thermal paste on it, reseed it, make sure everything is right, and then we'll check our temperatures again. And at the same time, I guess sort of kind of do a review of the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste and uh, see what we think, see how it compares with the Cooler Master paste that I put on that came with my CPU cooler. So I think that is about all I need to say for the intro to this video, so let's get started. Now, to be able to see whether or not uh, reseeding my CPU cooler and using the Noctua thermal paste is making any kind of a difference, we're going to need a baseline number to go off of. So I've opened up Prime95 here, as well as a hardware monitor, so I can uh, you know, look at all my core temperatures on my CPU right here. Um, then I can also, you know, uh, look at the core clocks and see, you know, what kind of uh, frequency they're running at, make sure that, you know, if there's any throttling or anything going on, that kind of thing. But mostly, we're most uh, concerned about the temperatures for now. I'm just going to see kind of what happens with this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a test on Prime95 here, and we're going to run it for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Um, so long as the temperatures don't get too crazy high. So then that will give us our baseline numbers that we'll have to compare to after we switch out the thermal paste. All right, let's go. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes that the Prime 95 has been running. And as you can see, the t temperatures have stabilized right here, kind of in the mid 80s, which you know, for CPU temperatures is pretty hot, um, but from what I understand of the 4790K is that that's within its, you know, normal operating temperatures. I think it starts throttling, you know, somewhere between 90 and 100 C or something like that. But uh, I should say that uh, the ambient temperature in my room here is, uh, I, I don't totally know exactly what it is, but if I had to guess, I would say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, you know, 26, 27 degrees Celsius. Um, but as you can see here, I'm running at 100% uh, CPU utilization, or at 4.4 gigahertz. Um, yeah, I uh, set it back to uh, stock speeds for this test, um, just because I wanted to get, like, a good baseline and everything on all the numbers. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, that's where we're sitting right now. So this is our numbers we have to compare to. Looks like our max temperature on the package was 86 degrees Celsius. So now I'm going to go ahead and stop this test. Uh, then I need to shut my computer down and pull my CPU cooler and see if this Noctua paste makes any kind of difference. 
Uh, all right, guys, we'll see you again in a while. So the main reason I haven't tried applying new thermal paste and reseeding my CPU cooler before now is because to remove my Cooler Master V8 GTS, it requires that I completely remove the motherboard from the case, which of course involves completely disconnecting everything and unscrewing the motherboard. And I'm just too lazy for all of that. Not to mention, I didn't have any thermal paste on hand, and I just kind of kept neglecting to buy any. Removing my CPU cooler immediately reminded me that when I installed this cooler the first time, I felt that I had gone a little heavy on the thermal paste. Not that it's really all that big a deal, but it just took a little more elbow grease along with the paper towel and isopropyl alcohol to get it all cleaned up. Luke from Linus Tech Tips actually did a really great video showing how different amounts of thermal paste affect CPU temperatures, which I'll link for you guys in the cards if you'd like to check it out. I was probably a little more anal cleaning off my CPU's integrated heat spreader than is really necessary, but, you know, that's just the way I roll. Once I was finished with my OCD cleanup job, I very gently placed the CPU into the socket, moved the retention cover into place, and then locked it in. It was then time to goop on some of that Noctua NTH1 thermal paste that set me back a whopping eight US dollars on Amazon, which I've included a link for in the video description, should you so choose to also purchase some. In the past, I've always used the P method, but this time I wanted to change things up a bit, so I went with the line method, just to show that I'm not controlled by the P. Installing this cooler can be a bit of a challenge because getting the retention nuts onto the screws is a little tricky, but thanks to time lapse and video editing, I look like a freaking rock star installing this cooler in only 10 seconds. With the CPU all properly gooped up and the cooler installed, I drop the motherboard back into the case. Okay, truthfully, I carefully placed it back into the case, screwed it in place, reconnected everything, crossed my fingers and said a prayer that everything would work fine so that I could finish this video. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that little taste of nerd nectar you just got there. And as you can see, we're back up and running again. And uh, you, uh, you see my uh, core clocks are uh, fluctuating all over the place, but that's because I've got OBS open to uh, record all this. I don't have a capture card. So I just used some uh, live streaming software, basically, <laughs> to capture it all. Anyhow, um, as you can see, our core temperatures are uh, kind of fluctuating here in the mid-30s. And here's a screen capture of our previous test where we were kind of up in the upper 30s and into the low 40s. So, so far it looks like our CPU temps have dropped uh, by a few degrees uh, with this Noctua paste. I should mention that my ambient room temperature is about the same as it was before, right around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you know, or around 27 degrees Celsius or so. Um, so it looks like our temperatures have improved a little bit here uh, at idle. So now let's start up Prime 95 and uh, see what happens. Uh, once again, I'm going to let it run for about 15 minutes or so, and then uh, show you guys where we're at. All right, it is now the moment of truth to see if that Noctua paste has made any difference for us really at all. And looking at uh, these temperatures right here, and uh, looking at the screen capture from before, it looks like we are right about the same. Right there in the mid 80s, uh, 85, 86, 87 you know, degrees or so. And that's about uh, what we had uh, before. So it's looking like the whole exercise of pulling the CPU cooler and applying new thermal paste has not really done anything for us to improve our thermals. But I was looking to see if this would do anything for us. And we now have a result. I now know for sure that uh, even though I had a little bit too much thermal paste on there, that everything was pretty much as it should be. Well, that wasn't exactly the results that I was anticipating, but it was a result. We learned that the Noctua NTH1 thermal paste and the Cooler Master paste that comes with my CPU cooler uh, work about the same. 
And we also learned that uh, seemingly my CPU cooler was in fact installed correctly the first time. So if you guys like this video, if you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up button and show me how much you liked it. And for those other people, there's this button that looks kind of like that. If you guys are not yet subscribed to my channel and you liked what you saw here today and you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. And before I head on out, I just want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me today, for watching the video, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. I'll catch you later.